Hey everyone, Julian here today. I'm going to show you how to make EBM modern style. Everything you need to know. There's been a ton of requests for this video. As usual, you can get the full project files, samples, MIDI, presets right in the top of the description on my website. This is one of the best EBM templates on the market. I promise if you grab this right now, you will make the best music of your career today. Go grab it. It's super accessible and it really helps support me. But most importantly, it's about supporting you guys, giving back, and giving you really high quality templates to make your best music from. Go ahead and grab that so you can make your best track. Link is at the top of the description. Thank you so much, everybody. Let's dive in. All right, so we're up at 127 BPM. We have a side chain. And the first thing we've got going on here is the kick. So this kick is made with two layers. What it is is it's really based around a Lindrum kick. So we start with this one. Right? You can hear that. But then if you look at it, Obviously, it doesn't really have like that same level of low end like you would maybe want for the big, punchy kind of kick like this, right? So basically, the way you solve that is we're just cutting out the lows on the Lindrum kick with EQ3 here. And then we have this big, fat house kick underneath it, and we're doing just the lows and mids on that. So this is that kick. This is like a big 909. And then, yeah, we're just taking the lows and mids. So you get the fullness from that, but then, obviously, the punch and the click from the Lindrum. And if you do it right, where, you know, you get the start times perfectly lined up like this, and you don't have any problems with EQ3, like keeping the crossover frequencies the same and all of that, as you can hear, you can create this modern, much better Lin drum kick. Because a lot of people, you know, want to use this for these style of tracks. Of course, again, the Lin kick just right out of the drum machine is not usually going to do it. And you're probably wondering, you know, how to get that. There you go. It's literally just layering. There's no effects other than the EQ. Just two high quality samples. Then we have the bass line. <laughs> So here's the MIDI on the bass. So if you look at this, it might seem complicated, but it's actually just F and E across different octaves, right? So it's a complicated pattern with very simple notes. Because it's only two notes, you can go crazy all over the keyboard like this, as long as it's just octaves of those two notes. And it'll sound really catchy due to how simple it is. Like if you use less notes like this, like literally just two notes, like I said, it's less information for your brain to take in, and it can be catchier. And it can still be complex, but it'll sound simple, and people will be wondering why. So for the actual sound on this, it's actually made of four layers. So it's like this little instrument rack, and then a sub bass. So for what's happening here inside of the instrument rack, the reason why I say it's four layers is because we have three inside of here, and then the sub. So we have this. this and then this now the layering is important because when you hear a sound like this like this massive super full you know it's literally taking up the whole frequency spectrum it can seem confusing and that's why i think layering is really important because when you hear this you hear things the reason why it would sound confusing is because you're hearing things that are kind of like not meant to fit together, you know? Like you hear a bunch of unison, but it still has the really powerful mid-range that's like not weak or anything. And you hear a bit of that FM texture, right? But still like the big unison bases as well. So that's the purpose of the layering. Now for the actual sound, so the first one here is wavetable. We have a square wave, and then this noise manipulator wavetable, plus a low pass filter. We have an envelope on the FM amount of oscillator one on the filter cutoff and then also an LFO on the oscillator 2 position and the FM amount so it's moving that around I can hear that's kind of morphing the bass we also have the low pass here is being automated with this macro so the reason I'm doing that is you can see I have all three of these I have the low pass filter mapped to that so that you can just move them all at once like that and bring it down if you want to. Then on this we just have a bit of unison and some chorus. The second layer is actually a very similar patch but it just doesn't have any unison. This one is a saw wave with a bunch of FM. 
and then that same noise manipulator. Same thing with the low pass and the matrix and the envelope and LFOs. Just no unison. And then this one has something interesting where we're actually using an envelope phaser. So to kind of get that like, kind of like pluck to the sound, if I turn that off. Hear the texture that it's adding? So what we're doing is I have this set like this. I turn the amount down so that's making it so it's not moving. It's just staying in one place. And then I have this MIDI envelope over here which I just map to the center frequency, which is basically where the LFO is moving. And again, you can just get a much more interesting texture out of the saw wave with that. And then for the last layer, it's made with operator. So this is just some FM stuff, kind of making like a plucky sort of sound. You can see first oscillator is up a few octaves, so it's super FM sounding with the low pass with an envelope. And then also that same filter mapped to the macro, just like I said with all the others. Then on everything at once, we have a little bit of drum bus. It's at 18%, so you're not actually hearing much of it. Here's without it. See, it's still fat without drum bus. Drum bus is not fixing anything, it's just adding to it. And then when we turn it on, it adds that last little bit of punch. Then we have a low cut and a cut at 100 hertz to make room for the kick. And then we have the last layer of bass, which is the sub. So it's a simple sub bass, it's the same MIDI, it's the same exact notes in the same place, but I just got rid of the octaves so that it's just in one octave so you get really steady, powerful low end. And that's another reason for the layering because like this MIDI on the sub, see it's not quite as full as. This is literally just a sub oscillator and a saw wave, an octave apart, inside of wavetable, low pass filter, with a tiny bit of envelope to make it just punch a little. Low cut at 41 hertz, not anything you can really hear, but just cutting out the stuff that we get in the way of the mastering. On the bass group, we just have a side chain, side chaining to that side at the top. We have this utility just converting the bass to mono below 355 hertz, another sub cut, and that is it for that. Then we have the last of the drums, which are very simple and they sound like this. So you really just want like a few, you know, simple hits that are gonna fit over top. Obviously, I mean, between this kick and the bass, that's already a lot of the frequency spectrum. So these drums will just sit right on top. So we got this nice punchy EBM snare. So this is like one of those, you know, classic fat drum machine sounds. But then I'm doing a gated reverb actually. So what we're doing is we have this hybrid reverb here, which sounds like this. And then I added a gate afterwards and kind of set it up so that you still get the snare. You still get a little bit of the reverb, but check it out. See, it's doing the gated reverb where it's and it just stops. And you can even play with like the release. and different settings and try to get it going here, but yeah. Gated reverb in Ableton, pretty simple. We have a close 808 hi-hat. Then I made this hi-hat with white noise and operator. So yeah, it's white noise, super short envelope, bandpass filter, and a hard shaper to make it more punchy. This is really good because it can kind of help you differentiate it from the other hi-hat if you make it from scratch like that. And then the last thing we have down here are these little effect sounds. So you can see it's pretty simple stuff. If you hear it in the whole track, I'll turn off the bass so you can hear it with the drums. So you can hear it's they're all kind of working together, creating this groove, like you get call and response where you have this long one at the start with a bunch of delay on it, and then just a little tiny as like the response, right? Even here where it goes like, you know, it's all just call and response and kind of making these different things fit together. And then the other thing is like, again, like I was saying, this bass, and then especially when you add the drums, it is sticking up so much of the frequency spectrum that you obviously, you know, you want something maybe in the background to keep it moving, 
But these are pretty much like about as much stuff as you can put in the background, you know, with a bass like this and not have it be over stuff. <laughs> And that's going to be it for this one, guys. So, I hope you enjoyed. As always, make sure to like this video as well as subscribe. And let me know what you think of this video in the comments. Like I said in the beginning, you can get this full project file, samples, mini presets. The entire template is available at the top of the description on my website. It's super accessible. And I promise if you grab this today, it will really help you take your EBM tracks to the next level. Again, I put a lot of time into this. I just wanted to make you know the best template on the market for this stuff to really help you guys and give you what you've been looking for. Go ahead and grab it. Take, get yourself out of the dark. Thank you so much for the support, everybody. And I'll see you tomorrow with another video.